Hello and welcome to Morning Beer. Do I look good today? Like, I look good. Or maybe I think it's the hat. I'm going to need a little bit of that pick-me-up along with that, you know, sedative. That's why I'm going with this block 15. <gasps> yes. Mmm. Cosmic cold brew. Stout ale with coffee added 7% ABV. I know I have a lot of beers in my fridge. That's why they have to go into the other fridge sometimes. Block 15 is down in Corvallis, Oregon. Uh, Block 15's Beer Sticky Hands is one of my absolute favorite IPAs. So far, everything they do is great. I decided on this beer because I knew that it would be good. About answers that question, huh? Do I need to do a review of this beer? No. Am I going to drink this beer while we talk about some important information? Yes. I recommend you get one, too. Ooh. Oh, I could live in that aroma. Yum. Oh. <laughs> what was he saying? <laughs> Too many beers to choose from. I know, there's a problem. You walk into a beer store or anywhere and they're like, oh, we have 50 taps. And you're like, great, thank you. We make my life more difficult. So what I generally do when picking out a beer when I'm confronted with all these things is I start to narrow it down. How do you narrow it down, Nitch? Do tell. I start with this first thing. Is this beer independent? I'm going to logo it up. I just want you to remember, these are the ones you don't want. And it's just because they, this one reason, they don't, they're not 75% owned by a craft brewery. But first, here's a message from an alien. We want to help you celebrate. That's right, Cookie Puss. We want everyone to know that we're made at participating Carvel stores with America's freshest ice cream. Not all nostalgia is good nostalgia. Sometimes it's just downright fucking scary. <laughs> and uh, making it into a milkshake IPA is even more terrifying. Do you even know what a Cookie Puss is? Uh, if so, uh, be the first to shout it out in the comments. And I'll probably send you a prize. Surprise prize. Because you're probably into that. Here we go, folks. Miller Coors. They own Leinenkugel, Terrapin, St. Archer, Hoppin' Valley, and Revolver Brewing out of Texas. This isn't all going to be a list, I promise. Um, not an independent company. Shinerbach, unfortunately, along with Bridgeport Brewing that recently closed here in uh, Portland. Here are the big ones. Here are the ones that you're like, oh, look at all those options on the top lines. JK, no options. AB Bev, they own Ten Barrel, Golden Road, Elysian, who's, oh God, I love this, whose best-selling pale ale at the time of acquisition was titled Corporate Beer Still Sucks. Oh. Oh, that's embarrassing. Breckenridge, which uh, at the time was Colorado's sixth largest craft brewer before the purchase. Um, but that doesn't include the Breckenridge Brew Pubs. So if you're in Colorado, there's Breckenridge Brew Pub, whatever. Hit that up. Four Peaks. That was like them trying to do an athletic thing, which I think Four Peaks is going to keep moving into that. Devil's Backbone Brewing, which, f unfortunate story, in 2016 when they got bought out, the uh, uh, co-founder was actually on the board for the Brewers Association, and he had to resign because, you know... It ended Backbone's qualification as craft. Uh, Blue Point Brewery, Long Island. Goose Island out of Chicago, which is one of the United States' oldest breweries. Lev, Hogarth, and Stella. Just think of the amount of money we've given these people over the years. And on top of that, the illusion continues with them owning 30% investments in Omission, Widmere, Red Hook, Cisco Brewers Nantucket, American Mountain Brewery, Windward Brewing, and then also Square Mile Cider, because you know what? Slap that out of your mom's hand. Slap it out of her hand. Technically not at all craft, but it does seem as if they are. A Carbotch Brewing, and also at the last one, Wicked Weed, which is <laughs> at that moment when 
all ABM Bev just took the beating heart of craft people and just went, oh, this is what you like? This is your little fun thing? Well, that's good. It's ours now. Ha ha ha. Money rules everything. It's a great story. You should look into it. Maybe we'll talk about it someday. But Wicked Weed used to be the darling of the craft beer industry. And then it got bought by ABM Bev. And then ABM Bev said, that's fine. We're done. We're done buying things now. We just wanted everything. Great. You need a brewing Sweetwater PBR, which is a holding company for, uh, hold your breath. P. Valentine and Sons, G. Hailman, Lone Star, Pearl Brewing, Valentine Blatz, National Brewing Company, Olympia, Flagstaff, Primo Brewing and Malting, Rainier Brewing, F&M, Schaefer, Joseph Schlitz, Jacob Schmidt, and Stroh. The thing is, is PBR likes to take in those national brands and, and revamp them. So a lot of those little things you think are like, oh, this is a local brand. It's not anymore. And nothing brings me more joy than watching a person's face melt as I inform them that that local beer they hold so dear to their America love and heart is actually uh, owned by an international uh, giant company or an out-of-state investment firm. <laughs> Moving on. Full sail. Bye-bye. Abita. They're still not craft. Here's a creepy one. They own. Pyramid Brewing, Norwester, Genesee, Labatt USA, which they're kind of big anyway, who cares? Saxer Brewing, and also Magic Hat. They're owned by some fucking Costa Ricans. What? Something to tell your friends about. Not independent anymore. Another one of those little heart pains, because that's the beginning of the craft beer scene here in the United States, but Anchor Brewing, bye. Uh, San Miguel, uh, they now partially own founders, um, still no excuse for what's going on, the, the racial harassment of their employees at founders, we'll talk more about more ways to narrow down what you're going to be drinking, but right now we're just going to stick with independence and not talk about morals. Rock Bottom Brewing, as well as Gordon Biersch, Schlafly, Schlafly's, it's not independent, but it was, now they're just Schlafly's. So Constellation, the guys who made Robert Mondavi wine and Svedka Vodka, those people, um, they bought Ballast Point, which they have now used to buy Funky Buddha out of Florida. Mm. Uh, Heineken would be the next one that owns some stuff. They own Lagunitas. Well, they bought 50% of it initially, and then they bought all of it. And then they turned uh, Lagunitas into another shell company that they're calling Lush. Lagunitas U.S. Holdings. Uh, they also purchased uh, Moonlight Brewing out of Austin, Texas. And it used to be called South End Brewery and Smokehouse. And they changed it just straight up to Lagunitas Tap Room and Beer Sanctuary. Where beers go to die. Oh, yeah. And then they also took up Shorts Brewing. But they they only own 19.99. What a random number of Shorts. And Shorts says, Heineken has nothing to do with us. But still, the money that you give shorts does in some way go back up to those motherfuckers. So, great. That's your choice. It's a, so, it's a fucking shell game out there. Um, I still can't find out who owns Montaki Cold Snack. It's sneaky. I don't know. And don't get me wrong. If I'm at a place and that's all there is, is this stuff then I'm still gonna get a beer and I'm not gonna judge anyone if they do have it. But what this is gonna do is it's gonna help you narrow down that selection when you're looking at that giant wall of beer, that whole tap list of selections. Here's how you can know whether or not you're getting bought into that illusion of choice, okay? And the Brewers Association has done a really great job about implementing this label, right? The Independent Brewers Label. Beer's not that difficult. Don't worry about it. Just chill out. It's not, we don't, we're, it's good. Beer's good, even if we may not be. Right? I'll see you tomorrow.